Good evening, Maranatha, and what a special evening this is. It is, of course, the eve of our dear Savior's birth. And tonight we want to celebrate together. We're going to celebrate with having our children sharing the Christmas story. We're going to be lighting the Christ candle together, and we're going to be hearing greetings from our family and friends in our congregation. So I would like nothing more than to be able to be with you in person tonight and be singing his praises together. But I'm so grateful that wherever we are, our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, our Prince of Peace, and our everlasting Father, he is there with us. St. Patrick uh, has his famous way of saying that. He says it like this, Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me, and Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, and Christ in every ear that hears me. Wherever we are tonight, we are celebrating our Emmanuel, that God is with us. I love you, bless you, enjoy the evening, and Merry Christmas. Everything was ready. The moment God had been waiting for was here at last. God was coming to help his people, just as he promised. But how would he come? What would he be like? What would he do? Mountains would have bowed down. Seas would have roared. Trees would have clapped their hands. But the earth held its breath. When no one was looking, he came. Our story begins with a girl who was engaged to a man named Joseph. But Joseph was the great, 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 great grandson of King David. Now, if you ask me, that is a lot of greats. Yes. As I was saying, this girl named Mary was minding her own business one morning when suddenly an angel appeared right there in her own bedroom. Wow! Yes. That's amazing! You don't need to be scared. God is very happy with you. You're going to have a baby. A little boy. You will call him Jesus. He's God's own son. He is the one. He is a rescuer. It's too wonderful. How can it be true? Is anything too wonderful for God? So Mary trusted God more than her eyes could see, and she believed. I'm God's servant. Whatever God says, I will do. Sure enough, it was just as the angel said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have her baby. Now Mary and Joseph had to take a trip to Bethlehem, the town King David was from. But when they got there, they found every room was full. Every bed was taken. Can we stay here? No! Go away! There's no room for you! Where would they stay? Soon, Mary's baby would come. They couldn't find anywhere except an old tumble-down stable. So they stayed where the cows and the donkeys and the horses stayed. And there in the stable, amongst the chicken and the donkeys and the cows, God gave the world his wonderful gift. A baby that would change the world was born. Mary wrapped him up to keep him warm. They made a soft bed of straw and used the animal's feeding trough as his cradle. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Mary and Joseph named him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us. Because of course, he had. That same night, in amongst the stars, suddenly a bright new star appeared. You see, God was like a new daddy. He couldn't keep the good news to himself. He'd been waiting all these long years for this moment, and now he wanted to tell everyone. Meanwhile, some shepherds were out in the field. Shepherds? In those days, people used to laugh at shepherds and say they were smelly. But God must have thought shepherds were very important because they're the ones he chose to tell the good news to first. Anyway, the shepherds were warming themselves by fire when suddenly the sheep darted. They were frightened, 
by something. Was What was that, a wing beat? They looked around. There was a huge warrior of light blazing in the darkness. The shepherds were terrified. Do not be afraid. I bring you great joy. There's a son born in Bethlehem, and you go see him. There's, he's in a manger. Suddenly, more and more angels appeared with the first one. Glory to God. Glory, Glory to God. God. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Then as quickly as they appeared, the angels left. The shepherds stamped out their fire, left their sheep, raced down the grassy hill, through the gates of Bethlehem, down the narrow cobblestone streets, through a courtyard, down some steps, past an inn, round a corner, through a hedge, until at last they reached a tumble-down stable. They caught their breath, then quietly tiptoed inside. They knelt on the dirt floor. They had heard about this promised child, and now he was here, heaven's son. This baby would be like that bright star shining in the sky that night, a light to light up the whole world. And the darker the night got, the brighter the star would shine. Everything has changed. Purple is the color of kings and queens. Now, purple is a serious color, and something serious is about to happen. A king is coming, but he is not the kind of king that people thought would come. This king had no army, no great house, and no riches. This king was a baby who was born in a barn. And the king who was coming is still coming. This is full of mystery. You know, a mystery is hard to enter sometimes. That is why this time at Advent has been so important. Sometimes people can right walk right through a mystery and not even know it is there. This time of year, you see or hear about people being worried about a great deal and they miss the mystery. Together with the prophets, Mary and Joseph, shepherds and wise men, let's make the journey together into the mystery of Christmas. Now, prophets are people who come so close to God, and God comes so close to them that they know what is most important. They point the way to Bethlehem. Though they didn't know exactly what was going to happen there, but they knew that this was the place. And here is the hand of the prophets pointing the way to Bethlehem, showing us the way to. They are saying, stop, watch, pay attention. Something incredible is about to happen in Bethlehem. This is the light of the prophets. Do you see Bethlehem on this next card and the road? Mary and Joseph are on their way to Bethlehem and we are going with them. Here is Mary and Joseph and the donkey. Now, Mary was about to have a baby. You know, it's very hard to walk when you're about to have a baby. Sometimes she could not take another step. But then she rode on the donkey. It's also hard to ride on a donkey when you're about to have a baby. So when she couldn't ride another step, she got down and walked. So she rode and she walked. They must have been the last people coming up the road to Bethlehem that night. Here is the light of Mary and Joseph. Now, the shepherds, why, 
They were standing in the fields around Bethlehem, keeping their sheep. And suddenly there was so much light in the sky that it hurt their eyes. And they were terrified. Their hearts were beating so loud. And when they could hear something beside their own hearts, they thought they heard singing in the sky. An angel told them, don't be afraid. Angels often say that because it's scary to have a messenger of God come to you. This angel and other angels who appeared said, We bring you good news of great joy. Peace on earth and goodwill to everyone. A child is born. Go, hurry, run to Bethlehem to see the child who will change everything. And look, there is something different about this advent. Notice the color of the candle. It is full of joy, reminding us of the great joy the angels sang of. This is the light of the shepherds. And these are the wise men. The wise men knew so much, but of all the things they knew, they knew the most about the stars. They knew where each star was supposed to be at each time of year. So they could tell people when it was time to plant their crops or take a trip on the ocean or cross the high mountain passes when the snow wasn't too deep. And suddenly they saw a wild star it was not on any of their star maps. It went wherever it wanted to go. It did not stay put. So they decided to follow the wild star to see where it was going and what it wanted to show them. They followed the star all the way to Bethlehem, but they came from so far away that they got there sometime after the baby was born. Here is the candle of the wise men. Look, when we come to the mystery of Christmas, everything changes. It becomes the color of pure celebration. This is when the baby is born. The one we've been waiting for. Emmanuel was his name. A name meaning God is with us. The mystery of Christmas. This is amazing. But of all the creatures there that night, perhaps the most amazed was the old cow. When the old cow came up to the feed box that morning to eat some straw, it found a baby lying in the manger. The baby, the manger had become a bed. And all the cow could do was look and look at the baby with its big brown eyes. Wait, something is missing. Ah, the Christ candle. This is the Christ candle. Let's enjoy its light. Now, I want to show you something very strange and very important. I want to show you what happens when the light is changed. Look, do you see how the flame is just in one place now? It's right there. You can see it. Now, when we change the light, it will no longer be in just one place. You can't see it after it spreads out all over the room, but it is still there. Watch. Do you see it? It is no longer here in one place, but it is spreading out, getting thinner and thinner as it fills up the room with the light of the prophets. 
Anywhere you go in this room, you will be close to the prophets who show us the way to go. Now, do you see how the light of the mother Mary and father Joseph is just one place? We are going to change that light so that it can be in every place. The room is filling up with the light of the prophets and with the light of Mary and Joseph. And this is the light of the shepherds. And we will do the same. And the light of the wise men. And now, finally, we're going to change the light of the Christ candle. Look. It, too, is spreading out to fill the room. You might not be able to see it, but it's still there. You can still sense the Christmas light. It is filling up the room with the prophets, the Holy Family, Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, the three kings. Anywhere you go, you can come close to them. And this, my friends, is the unfolding of the mystery of Christmas, which we can enjoy even tonight, even tomorrow, and the upcoming days and year. Christos Rizdaicha, or in English, Christ is born. Hi, I'm your Maranatha, it's Marianne. I'm coming to you from my drum room. I'm kind of giving you a little bit of a, a view of my COVID projects, what I have been doing. I've been spending time with God and the Holy Spirit, and I've learned how to play the drums. I paint, I painted this, and that's kind of what I've been working on. But you know what, tonight I want to share you a little bit what Christmas was for me as a little girl. You know, when I was a little girl, we celebrated Christmas uh, in January. January 6th was Christmas Eve because I grew up in a um, very traditional Ukrainian household and family. And so Christmas Eve was extremely a special time in our traditional home. I didn't understand as a little girl that when my mother was putting hay underneath the table and putting the bread in the center with a candle, that she was actually duplicating, according to Ukrainian tradition, the manger uh, where Jesus was born and the candle and the bread or the kolot was actually significant for the Bethlehem star. What I also didn't realize is Christmas Eve was the time where it was very Christian religious. We didn't open presents at Christmas. Christmas was all about celebrating the birth of Jesus, right down to the food. So we would open our presents on St. Nicholas Day, which was December 19th. And after that, we would go and we would enter a time of fasting where we would not eat meat. And so when Christmas Eve came along, Part of the Christmas celebration was breaking our fast with the traditional 12 meatless dishes, which signify which each dish was chosen in remembrance of each one of the 12 disciples that had lost, spent their last supper with Jesus. So it was actually really awesome to discover that not only was my home embedded in deep Ukrainian tradition and following these you know, lighting the candle in the window for the homeless to come in and stuff like that. But there was actually deep spiritual meaning to these to these traditions. And I believe that is what Christmas is really about. We are here to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And so once again in Ukrainian, Christos Dayich, and the response then would be Slavitya Ho. Indeed, he is born. Have a wonderful Merry Christmas from my home to yours. God bless. Bye for now. 
Oh, hey, can we say Merry Christmas, Maranatha Church? Merry Christmas, Maranatha Church. My name is Katie. My name is Katie. My name is Katie. My name is Katie. This is Lorelai and Gideon. Uh-uh. Mommy. And one of our favorite things that we've done over the holidays so far are read lots of Christmas books, right? Yeah. And, is, and we have one of our favorites for you right here. It's Silent Night, done with some Thomas Kincaid art. And guys. So we'll sing. I don't know. This is part of it I for don't. you guys. How we like to sing it, okay? Are you guys ready? My mommy. Okay, here we go. Laura, right here. Here we go. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild. <coughs> Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! <laughs> Angels we have heard on high. From the Cornish household, Denise, Steve, Jonah, Levi, Grace, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas everybody. everybody! Love you! Love you! Hello everyone from the church family. On this Christmas Eve of 2020, we want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And just a quick reminder, if you've not checked your church mailbox yet, there is a little uh, pamphlet in there for all of you. It's called The Christmas Story in the Passion Translation. So I uh, hope you'll uh, get your copy and you can read it any time of the year. And a Merry Christmas to everyone. One, two, one, two, three, four. We, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Glad tidings we bring to you and your kindred. Glad tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, everyone. A very Merry Christmas. I think I need a haircut. I think you do too. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, and uh, we say peace on earth, goodwill towards men. We release peace and shalom into your homes and over your families. Bless you. Amen. Merry Christmas. From Brian and Luella. It's the last fun video of the year. Merry Christmas!
From the Huberts. So one of our traditions in our family is... Gingerbread, gingerbread houses. Gingerbread houses. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great Christmas, Have a great Christmas everyone. everyone. And then we crouch down. And then we crouch okay. down again. <laughs> It's about Jesus being born, and Christmas is about the Lord Jesus, who done lots of things. There's lots of fun things more about Christmas than Santa. So, so you can do, you can still leave out cookies and milk, but just don't, but just let your mom, and dad eat them. Like my tree for I decorate kind of for Christmas, and it's gonna be awesome. And so. Um, Christmas is about Jesus, and Jesus was born on Christmas Day. That's why Christmas was even around. Okay? Bye! See you later! Hope you have a great Christmas! Woo! <laughs> Merry Christmas! Bye! Lord! Bye bye!
with two 